Good evening, good evening, good evening, everyone. Um, we see people logging in now, but I want to go ahead and get started right now because we do want to be respectful of everyone's time. Everyone's time, and uh, welcome everyone to the brand executive. This is our. Uh, I think we started in November. November, Steve. So we're approaching that tw the twelfth one. Uh, it was actually a year ago this month that we put this plan together. So it's pretty amazing to see how it's progressed over the last year. So. Again, um, AJ, I just want to welcome you guys out to the brand executive with um, Steve, of course, Steve Canal, and Inatan uh, Variola. Did I say that right, sir? I just want to make sure I got it right. Hey, Inatan. My man, how you doing, brother? Oh, man, I'm fantastic. I'm fantastic. Um, just wanted to make sure I got your name right, your last name right, your last name right. So, um, Inatan Bariola, is that correct? Inatan Bariola, yes, sir. Inatan Bariola, the second, absolutely. All right, guys. So, again, I want to welcome everybody to the uh, to the call. And here's what I would like you guys to do right now before we uh, get going. Go ahead and take a picture of the screen, and we want you to do this throughout. Throughout, take a picture of the screen, and we want you to share it on Instagram, and that will bring you to my next uh, slide here. Um, share it on Instagram. Um, and while we're while we're logging in, guys, if you see the question arrow, I mean the question box to the right of your screen, go ahead and type where you're from, uh, how you heard about the call. I see some familiar names and I see some new names. What's up, Sean? Sh Shari? What's up, Vanessa? Um, Nika? What's up, Jim? Jamila? Greg? Um, what's up, Tony? A couple a couple new names tonight. Uh, Type where you're from, how you heard about the call, and then also just so that Steve and Inatan know, you know, what is the gift that you share with the world? Um, we're definitely going to turn this into a conversation tonight, so prepare yourselves because I will be unmuting the microphone and putting people on the spot. So as long as you guys know that, then just prepare yourself, all right? Now, before we get started, we always, always, always do house cleaning. Uh, like I said a minute ago, we do want you to share this on Instagram and on Facebook. Uh, if you are not a member of the private uh, the brand executive Facebook group, you can go right now to members.thebrandexecutive.com and you can sign up there. Also, we want you to follow the three of us on Instagram. If you are not, uh, Steve Canal is at Steve Canal. I am AJ Joiner, um, AJ J O I N E R, and um, Anton is at Berriolesque. That is B E R E O L A E S Q U E, just like it is on the screen. Our hashtags for tonight is going to be the brand executive, um, hashtag crown, and hashtag the great. All right. Now, when I introduce you guys or when I unmute some of you guys on the call, and we're going to do a practice really quickly here, I want you to tell us who you are, uh, the name of your business, and tell us your Instagram name so we can show you some love as well. So let's see. Who do we have here? We have Sean. Sean is um, he's in Edgewater, New Jersey. Uh, with fam, you. Alum, he's, he has Miller Coors. So, and let's see, Nika from Iowa. Um, she heard about the call with Kenny Burns a few months ago, and now she listens into the calls. I love it. So, we're going to test the microphones really quickly, and I'm going to unmute. Let's see, I'm going to unmute. I'm, I'm at work. Please don't unmute me. <laughs> Thank you for letting us know that because I was just about to unmute you. <laughs> so, I'm going to go, let's see here, with Nika. Um, Nika, you are, looks like you're unmuted on my side, so if you would just really quickly so we can test the microphones on your side, if you would unmute the microphone from your side, it's the orange button, uh, just introduce yourself and talk about how you heard about the call. And uh, one thing that you want to take away from tonight, so Nika, Nika Michelle, um, if you would press the orange button on your side, the microphone is yours. Looks like you're with us. Hey, Nika. Hi, my name is Nick Michelle, and I heard about the call with Kenny Burns a few months ago, tuned in, and followed you guys on Instagram and Facebook, and now I get all the updates. So I, I tune in to the right here. I love it. And what is one thing that you want to, well, first of all, say hi to Steve and Inaton. <laughs> oh, hi, Steve, and hi, Inaton. How are you guys? Hey, how are you? Doing well. How are you? Doing very well. Good. And what's one thing that you want to take away tonight? Take away tonight. Um, I'm really open. Um, I just really want to gain more knowledge, just in general. So, more general knowledge, and I think, as a matter of fact, I know you're going to get that tonight. So, uh, buckle your seatbelt. I'm going to mute your microphone now. Thank you so much again for um, for 
being with us. Let me go ahead and mute you. Give me a second here. And again, guys, go ahead and type all your questions over in the chat window so that I can be sure and, and, and jump in with, with Stephen at a time. Hey, Jeff, uh, so, I'm live on Facebook too. So. Oh, you're going live on Facebook? Okay, and Steve is live on Facebook as well. So um, you can go, what is it, facebook.com slash Steve Canal um, and add him as a friend, and you can follow him live on Facebook. So that's pretty awesome. All right, uh, let's see here. Well, we're going to go ahead and get started. Let me make sure I didn't skip anything, and I did not. So, um, Mr. Steve Canal, go ahead and take it away. Awesome, AJ. Thanks for uh, um, all that we've done for the last, you know, nine months. I'm looking forward to another, you know, nine months ahead of this. Um, Absolutely. Sharing this information. So thank you, everybody, for being on the call tonight. We have a special, special guest. My brother, Anatan, is on tonight, um, and we plan on digging deep. Um, you know, there's a lot of topics we could talk about in relations to business, um, but we wanted to take it personal tonight, and we wanted to be living examples and be very transparent and talk about our experiences and talk about, you know, balancing love and business um, between all three of us, myself, AJ, and Anatan, you know, we all balance both um, from a perspective of just, you know, growing up single and dating to, you know, serious relationships and marriage and, and being able to manage the two. So we wanted to bring that to life um, today and give real life examples. Um, we'll be touching on transparency. We'll be touching on balance. Um, we'll be talk, uh, touching on um, over communication um, outlets. We'll also be talking about finances um, and, and, and being very real with it all. So, you know, as AJ said, <laughs> buckle, um, buckle up because it's going to be an amazing ride. Um, little known fact, um, usually when I get on this, I talk about, um, you know, me being able and blessed to travel this entire country and go to every state. But tonight I wanted to take it a little bit deeper. A um, little bit, little known fact is, you know, my family and I are from Haiti, um, and my great-great-grandfather was a president of Haiti. Um, my grandfather was a general um, in Haiti, um, and, and, you know, I never really shared that, <laughs> so I wanted to be able to spread that love and, and insight about me um, on the personal side since we're digging deeper on that today. I love it. I love it, and we'll keep, keep it going. Um, for getting this Facebook thing going. Um, so when you look at footprints, um, you know, I have a, a, a deep rooted, um, footprint when it comes into working within the corporate space and entrepreneurship space. On the corporate side, you know, I do national community affairs for Miller Corps. Um, on the personal side, I have the brand executive, which um, this is an extension of, and then on the entrepreneurship side, you know, I call myself a corporatepreneur. On the entrepreneurship side, I started out with clients um, such as Allstate and the U.S. Army, and doing activations and developing national platforms for them on a national scale, um, which led to me being able to travel to all the states in the country and and um, you know do some awesome and amazing events. So that's. These are my receipts. This is who I am. This is what's led me to, you know, my journey to where I am today. Um, so I just wanted to share that piece. And then next, we'll we'll go into um, our guest for tonight, Anaton, and get to know him a little bit better. Um, Anaton, I know, uh, you know, from from our journey that you know you have some amazing things going on. You have your agency. You have you know, best-selling books, you know, your family heritage, you have amazing people reading your books. Um, yeah. Mind sharing a little bit about yourself and your footprint? Yeah, man, you know, something that you shared I had no idea about, <laughs> uh, your, your, your family kind of history and lineage there, um, being the president of Haiti and a general. I have something a little similar, you know, I don't really share it that often. I don't get into too much detail. Uh, because it's kind of, you know, it can come off as pretentious, but it, it's it's truth. And um, I kind of I come from a royal background as well in Nigeria. My father's Nigerian, and my grandfather, who's my father's father, 
Uh, he, he was the chief of Western Nigeria, and my great great grandfather, who was my dad's mother's grandfather, if you could follow along, was the king of Lagos. And um, you know, there's a street named after us in uh, in Lagos. You can Google Bariola Street. You know, there's a village named after us, and there's a a lot of a lot of history there. When I was a kid, my dad would always kind of really reinforce who we are. Um, our last name, Bariola, means a person deserving honor, and uh, we we carried that um, we carried that crown uh, to date. You know, we we take it seriously, and um, we don't take it seriously in the sense that we walk around, you know, uh, kind of pointing the finger and with our heads held high and looking down on others, but we take it seriously in the sense of our lifestyle. And even with the first book I wrote, Bariola esque, it's kind of and even the name burial esque, you know, it's lending that that kind of uh, that same moniker to that to the everyday person, and um, saying this person can also, you know, live this same lifestyle, and, and, and ultimately comes from this same kind of royal background. That's where we all trace from. At the end of the day, we all come from kings and queens. But uh, so that's that's a little interesting tidbit. And as far as some of the readership, man, the, the books have been. You know, at a certain point, they've been out of my hand. You know, I kind of did what I had to do as far as writing them, doing the research, doing the marketing, getting the word out. And then at a certain point when a project is uh, great, it kind of gets, it goes beyond the artist. And I'm proud to say that Oprah Winfrey is an owner of my work. Um, I personally handed the book to her. Uh, the Obama family, including President Obama, Mark Zuckerberg and a bevy of others, a host of other notables. Uh, it's just kind of like a testament for me. I mean, there's a lot of a lot of accolades and awards and such, which at the end of the day, you know, it's it's good to kind of look back on and say that's cool, that's cute. Well, you know, some some of that stuff is meaningless at the end of the day, but uh, there's something to be said about very intelligent, prominent people who admire your work and respect it. Awesome. Um, well, this is uh, before I go to the next slide, man. I want to say to you, like, don't diminish the work that you've done, brother. Like, that is a, an amazing feat. And I know, you know, there's something to be said for humility, but you have, you know, you put in work to do that and you work to live a life that reflects that. So I think, you know, it is, it, that's a great accomplishment. And like, when I hear that, I'm like, man, that's amazing. So don't don't diminish that man. That's, that's those are your that's your work. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like you know, you what? know what I'm saying? I love it. <laughs> you know when I received that man because uh, I, I I downplay. You know this is a very honest call and I downplay a lot um, for the purpose of forward progression. I don't I don't remain in one spot too long because mm -hmm. the view is so beautiful. I don't want to get caught up on it, caught up in it. So I, I keep it moving. So I, I received that brother. I do absolutely absolutely. So. Yeah, I just wanted to say that. And, and one of the things that I just heard recently in a talk was, you know, it's it's look back and be grateful. Uh, but keep looking forward, but don't diminish, you know, things that you've accomplished because you put that out there and you work really hard to accomplish that. And I don't want to dwell, but I just wanted to say, you know, thank you for sharing that. But don't don't diminish it, man. That's that's amazing. <laughs> oh, man. Cool. Steve, I'm gonna keep it pushing, brother. <laughs> Cool, cool, cool. All right. Um, I guess NSI, um little known fact about you, uh, which I think is pretty amazing and cool in itself, the fact that you can basically play almost all major instruments. Talk a little bit about that. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean there's the thing about it, I don't like you know, kinda of what even AJ was saying, I don't talk I don't talk much about myself. It's hard enough to sell myself because, you know, I am at times the product. My lifestyle is the product. Uh, so, I mean, one thing I do is I play just about every instrument, all, all self-taught. I learned to play the drums. I played for my church for years and years. I even got a scholarship to FAMU. Uh, never played at FAMU, but I, I did get it. So I took, them, took the check. I got a scholarship for drumming out that way. I mean, I'm, I played in several concerts. I'm, I'm on some albums. Um, and I take the same... The same creative creativity that I apply across the board uh, in my writing, in my fashion sense, 
and um, whether it's like interior design or whatever it is I do creatively, uh, which is very natural, I apply that same thing to everything creative I do. So whether that's drawing, painting, um, speaking, you know, uh, playing instruments, it's the same thing that I tap into, that same creativity. That, so I, I never really looked at these different skill sets as like a big deal because I, ma I mastered them at such a, an early age and it was so easy for me to do that I thought, you know, it's not that big of a deal. I mean, I haven't talked to you, Steve, earlier about the whole conversation behind Michael Jackson versus Prince and who's better. And a lot of times people will kind of lean toward Prince simply because Michael Jackson was an entertainer and he didn't play instruments, he didn't write a song, or, you know, he didn't produce. But Prince, on the other hand, did all of that. I never thought that was a big deal because I could do that stuff. You know, obviously not like Prince. <laughs> There's only one Prince, but I could, I taught myself to play every instrument. And I can play instruments to the point where you think I could like seriously, I could fool you. You know, I could play a few songs and I've mastered them that I've, I've learned and you, you think I could play anything. So, um, you know, it's, I think a, a, another note is that uh, I believe a lot of us have uh, more than one gift and w more than one skill set and society kind of leans us in one direction and, and handicaps us saying that we can only do one thing. But the reality is I think we're capable of a lot. Yeah, and, and to feed off that, I think, you know, you're absolutely right. I think we're all born with, with gifts. Um, it's just, you know, the way society's set up, we're, we're so boggled down with so much that you don't have time to really tap into it all. You know, it's kind of you have to hedge your bets and you have to focus almost tunnel vision on, on, on what you're trying to accomplish. And sometimes, you know, some of those additional skills fall to the wayside because you just don't have the time, you know. So uh, I, I definitely agree with that. Yeah, I mean, I think every goal has an end date, you know what I mean? Like if you have a specific uh, goal in mind, there's an end date to it. And once that, once that date comes, you know, to pass and pick up something else, or even while it's happening, I think uh, it, it could be healthy to actually entertain some of those other gifts. You know, as we're speaking about balance tonight, um, if you have a corporate gig and you go to work and you, you're like a machine and you come home and you make dinner and you do this and do that and you go to bed and you go to work and like that becomes mundane and that's we're not we're not created to be these mundane beings we're we're dynamic you know there's so much that we can do and i think it's important that we tap into that and even if it's not for profit you know even if it's just for you know shoots and giggles i think it's important that uh mm -hmm. we retain that and i think that's going to tap into um you know what we talk about a little bit later when, when we look at outlets outlets for us when we're dealing with relationships and business um but Absolutely. AJ, you can move on. Let's get, let's get into this, AJ. So tonight's topic, we're talking about the gray area, um, which is interesting because Anton's last best-selling book, um, which he recently released, was called The Gray. Um, and it kind of is it's fitting with what we're talking about today with the gray area of being between balancing love and business. Um, a lot of times, you know, it's one or the other. And, and again, we don't have enough time sometimes to try and balance both. But huh. when you dig deep and you understand what you really want in life and your purpose in life, um, you make sacrifices. And that's what this is about tonight. It's a sacrifice. Um, in order to make anything work in life, um, whether it's relationships or business, you need to sacrifice. And sometimes we're too caught up into ourselves to give in to sacrificing, to seeing things work because we're accustomed to um, doing what we know what we want and what makes us feel good. Um, and we stick to that, not really feeling, thinking about how your partner might be feeling or thinking about how your client might be feeling. You're just thinking about you and your business and how you can overcome and accomplish. So tonight we're going to be very transparent and dig deep because we've, we've been on both sides. Um, when, you, when you look at business on a client side or an agency side, um, entrepreneurship um, to relationships, you know, whether it's being single and dating or, you know, being in a real married situation, you know. Um, so tonight we want to share our insights and share us. Um, AJ. So tonight, um, you know, just to get a little feel of who's in the room and who's listening um, and who's tuned in, we had two questions, and we, we'll, we'll go past them real quick. The first one is, who in here is married? 
um, AJ, I believe um, there's a button or the, the question section, just say me, you know, or raise your hand. And if you're mm -hmm. on um, the uh, Facebook Live, you know, just put a hand up or say yes if you're married. So we know where to, you know, where to guide this conversation tonight because we can tap into both. But if it's, you know, 100% married and or 100% single, you know, that'll help guide the conversation. If it's in the middle, then we know where to go. Um, and then the next one is, are you in a relationship? Uh, meaning, uh, dating, not so much married. So tonight we're going to look at one or the other. And if you're single, it's all good. You can take this insight um, and relate it into the you know, situation down the line. So on Facebook Live, AJ, about one, two, three, four. We got four so far. So four, five that just popped in all married. Um, anybody popping in saying they're single or in relationships? One single. Yeah, we got a single AF. <laughs> we got. <laughs> <laughs> we got. In a relationship, married, not in a relationship. We got, we got a whole. Uh, let's see, we got a. It's complicated. <laughs> Danielle, you crazy. <laughs> complicated. The famous, the infamous, complicated. The infamous, infamous complicated. Uh, what, what do you know about that? That complicated. I know everything about it. Now. I lived that life for quite some time. <laughs> right, we all been there. <laughs> all right. So, so it looks like the room is pretty even. Pretty balanced. Yeah. Balanced. Well, we go. Mindset of both. Um, right. So this this first one, you can back it up one. Um, so right yeah, yeah, right there. Um, so the first one we're going to talk on is transparent transparency and honesty um, mm. relationships. Um, and with yourself, if you're single, you need to be honest with yourself. Um, and if you're in a relationship or if you're married, um, you need to be true to yourself and the situation. Um, so with that, um, Enetan, um, I wanted to, to, to dig deep into this first level of transparency and honesty right. and the importance of it and making a relationship work or even with yourself and progressing and growing. Um, what, what are your thoughts on that? Man, it's... Uh... <laughs> is probably the hardest thing to do uh, in life. You know, people is talking about the gray area. People are willing to die with information, withholding information, um, whether that information is embarrassing, whether it's uh, difficult to confront, whether it, it helps, it, it makes resurface old ghosts, you know, whether it uh, exposes your closet, whatever it is. Um, we're willing to die with that because it's so difficult to accept, you know, it, it, it's, it's difficult to confront that mirror, to confront yourself. We run every single day from ourselves. We get in relationships and run from ourselves to have some sort of distraction. We do drugs, we drink alcohol, we go out, we are overachievers, we chase success, we uh, keep up a list of goals. I mean, we do everything we can to distract ourselves from the reality. Some people mourn when somebody passes away. Some people mourn by getting busy, right? They start planning the, uh, the services and, and making sure everybody's all right. And you can tell they're just they're being busy to keep a distraction from dealing with the reality, right? The most important thing you can do in this life is confront yourself, forgive yourself, accept yourself and love yourself like without those things nothing you're not going to work you're not going to work in your career you can kind of fake it you know what i mean you're not going to be happy you're not going to like have real joy you're not going to work in a relationship whether that's um romantic whether it's uh platonic whether it's uh, family friends whatever you, you can't be your full self without confronting yourself because everything's a lie right and i w we were just having a conversation before the call that the greatest way to see yourself is through other people, which is why I think we covet, you know, having a best friend or somebody like the homie, uh, you know, for, for the women, a bestie, uh, because that's the only way you could truly kind of see yourself. You're, you're biased when it comes to uh, describing yourself. If, I, if we were to ask everyone here to describe themselves, it would be all good things, right? It would be all the... <laughs> 
the unicorns and all this and that, but nobody would nobody would kind of clean out their closet and and really say uh, who they are today right now, right? Um, and I think it's important. It's very difficult, and sometimes it's hard to even see ourselves because subconsciously through our lives, you know, technically. Um, we're always about survival. Human beings are, are, are always seeking survival, They're always trying to survive. So subconsciously we can bypass in our minds, we can bypass things that have happened, we can forget things, make ourselves forget things that have happened. Um, in, in writing The Gray, man, I had to like go so deep that I, I forgot stuff happened. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> I forgot um, – my parents divorced at a young age and I forgot some of the things that occurred. You know, I had to have a talk, long talk with my sister and she was jogging my memory and I was shocked. Some of the things that she was saying, I was like, it was a, literally like a memory that was, I, I can't even explain, like in this deep, dark, <laughs> I just, I totally forgot about it. When she, it, when she mentioned it, I immediately remembered and I was, I couldn't believe it that I, I taught myself to forgive that in order to survive. So, there were a lot of things that, again, consciously and subconsciously, we skim over, we bury, um, that we have to confront in order to truly know ourselves, in order to truly um, love ourselves, forgive ourselves. And, and without, without, without this honesty, without this transparency, uh, it, none of that is possible. Yeah, and, and I, I love it, you know, you know, everything that you touched on and just to dig a little deeper, you know, when you get into a situation, whether it's love or business, we tend to hold things back because of that key word that you said. It, it can feel embarrassing or can, you know, you feel like it's embarrassing and you don't want to share it. But if you're in a relationship or if you have a new client or it's, it's your customers, um, when you hold things back and you're not transparent and you're not real with yourself, and what you can actually bring to the table, it's going to show. It's going to come up eventually. And when it does come up, it's, it, it, the backlash and, and the impact is going to be a lot worse than if you came up with it up front at first. Right. You know, holding that information until that other person figures it out or your customers call bullshit on your service or your product, it's going to be a lot worse than you actually letting people what you're capable of and what you can deliver. And when it's on, in the relationship, you know, I know a lot of people who, who are tuned in know this about those who have dated representatives for a year right. or two. And then two and a half years in or three years in, you get the real individual and you figure out who the person really is. And that honesty was never there. Um, but when you come into a relationship or you come into a business situation and it's real from the beginning, um, it's built, the foundation is there. Right. The foundation to build is there. And it's harder to destruct that foundation because you've built on honesty and trust and that transparency. So when you go into a situation, be real with the individual. Because if you're not being real with the individual, eventually, you know, it, it could come to light and that'll destroy and destruct, you know, what you thought you were building. Um, and that hurts, you know. Um, so being honest and, and having that transparency, you know, from the beginning um, is well worth it. You know, I know a lot of times you just feel like I don't want to share this information. Well, if that person finds out they don't want and didn't want to deal with it they'd want to deal with it anyway so you might yeah. as well get it out out front you know and deal with your clients your customers up front like you know i'll take it to the business side if if you if you have a product a certain product that you're delivering um and they ask you to fulfill an order of five thousand and you can only do a hundred what do you think is going to happen if you don't fulfill those orders you need to be up front like hey this is the capacity of what we can handle right now, and eventually we can get there. But you need to be upfront because you can lose that customer, all their friends, and who they influence all together, and you're done. You know, so transparency can take you a long way. Um, and before we go on, just to let everybody know, if you have a question, and I know AJ is going to 
say all this, but if you have a question, um, Facebook Live, you can type it in and, you know, we'll, we'll answer right away or, you know, as long as there's a little break in between. And then, you know, uh, on the call, um, you can type it in the box and AJ will, will, will ask that question. You can direct it to, you know, anytime myself, AJ, or all of us, and we all can answer one or the other, depending on time. Yeah, I just wanted to add quickly, man, it, it's, it's, you know, transparency is the greatest gift you can offer somebody, your authenticity, your authentic self, your truth, because it then allows someone to, well, number one, it allows them to then position themselves and, um, you know, perhaps they'll make amends. You have to give somebody the opportunity to decide. That's in relationship and business. Uh, you know, if you don't, it's a flat out lie, right? Number two, nine times out of ten times out of ten, that person has gone through what you're going through and perhaps can provide ways to help you navigate through it. You know what I mean? Like in my relationship, um, before my my when my wife was my girlfriend, you know, there were things that I was reluctant to share. I wasn't always completely open. Um, I, I could kind of get away with giving you my charm and giving you my wit, uh, flashing a smile and, you know what I mean, uh, making you melt when, I, when I'm around, and, and that was enough. From, you know, I was able to get away with that for so long, but she didn't allow me to, uh, she, wasn't, she wasn't fooled by my charm. You know, she, she required more of me, and she required me to open up and, let, you know, made, it, made me comfortable opening up to her and then giving her my, my, my honesty and just, like, being myself, um, she was able to help me navigate. You know what I mean? She was able to, uh, the fears that I had with, with uh, being honest, whether it was financial or whether it was um, whatever it was, you know, uh, she let me know that it was all good. You know, I gave her the opportunity to decide. So that's the greatest gift you have. Your authenticity, because it's tied to your truth, it's tied to who you are as an individual, and that's tied to that's tied to your gift. That's tied, I mean, that's tied to like that's that's what you have to offer the world. Only you have that thing. Nobody else has that thing. So don't be afraid to give it. Right. Um, a comment on this Facebook Live from Kurt. He says some of us need to do inventory monthly, weekly, hourly, or some of us need to do it minute by minute. Um, All of us. <laughs> need to do that and, you know, um, with the situation and you know I'll go even deeper with just like Facebook you know and or, or Instagram and you know wanting you know a certain amount of followers and you can have all the followers all the likes in the world but if there's no inner engagement and people actually holding dialogue and conversation and commenting on the situation what value is there really you know what is that like really doing for you you know, is that light going to translate into something? Who knows? But when somebody comments and they're leaving their perspective and we have so much going on in our lives and when somebody actually takes the time to sit down and write a comment, that's valuable. You know, that's showing true, um, you know, a true connection to what you're offering. You know, so that's more valuable. So just, just remember that. And, and before we move on, just in, in to to add to what Steve just said, even in this industry where, you know, we've worked with people who have influence or who are very intelligent people and you have things to offer other people, um, that's a very big part of it. Um, I had a potential client and I'm like, listen, if you're, you know, you want people to love you beyond, you know, the, what you're sharing about your life, you have to actually add value to their life by being transparent and honest with them uh, and engaging them. Like, like you just said, Steve, if someone's taking their time to say, hey, Steve, I'm struggling with, you know, X, Y, Z, then within reason, if you can answer a question, there may be 50 other people that see that answer that you, you just answered the same question for. So that two minutes that you took, you know, to, to provide feedback can impact a lot of people, that transparency and hey, here's a struggle that I had before, and here's how I overcame it. And I think that's one of the biggest pieces to building more than an audience and building a tribe. You want them to understand that you have been where they have been, right? And again, I'm talking on the business side, not so much relationship side, 
but I do think you know that's important to to pull into the conversation. Yeah, when yeah. I'll go ahead, my bad. I'm sorry. When you when you own it, that thing that that you're embarrassed to share, or that thing that you don't want to talk about, when you own it, you know you control it. You bring it to life. You know, so you need to really be. You need to own it. You know, for me, as an example, and I talk about this in in, in my book, is you know having dyslexia. You know, like who knew that when I talked about it and when I brought it to life, how many other people were like, wow, I'm dyslexic as well. You know, and how many people that I've been able to, you know, have real dialogue and conversation about the advantages of dyslexia, dyslexia and how it's impacted their life in this short period of time. You know, and, and you know, the, you know, in October, they're going to have a dyslexia um well, it's dyslexia month and organizations are reaching out to me about coming and speaking and, and, and being connected to it. Who knew? You know, if I didn't own it, none of that would be. You know, that little secret that I was holding that I'd feel about, but when you bring it out and talk about it, you know, other people can embrace it, you know, and you need you, but you need to own it. That's it. That's that's your advantage, man, your authenticity. That's 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 the thing that you bring into a room. You know what I mean? That, that allows you to win. What did that's what did uh, Khaled say? The major key. That's, right. That's, right. That's, <laughs> and that that unlocks people. Like, as you mentioned, I, I do it all the time. Authenticity unlocks people. Your truth unlocks people. When you're forward with whatever it is, then you'll notice that people feel more comfortable because you're giving them something. You know, you're you're giving them something that is coveted. It's, it's the truth. You know, and uh, when you give that, people then give it back to you. Right. And a comment from uh, Sasha, she says, what the world sees as flaws is really a gifting. And that's so true. And we've never talked about this, but they call dyslexia the gift. You know, they, that's what we call it, <laughs> which is crazy. And you just said that, you know, so um, it's, you know, you just have to own it and, and be able to be transparent and honest with your situation. Yeah, and I think I got to take that dyslexia test, man. Because you and I have had conversations. I think I have it. You know, it's uh, I see I see numbers and inverse. I think differently. Um, I don't always when I read. Um, sometimes I have to read again. So uh, I I embrace it as well. You know what I mean? And like I told you before, if it, I'm, I like to be different. So if it makes me different, man, I'm with it. And if it's a gift, I'm I'm 100 percent with it. Right. Aj, next one. Next topic um, is balance. Um, so we can, t you know, there's different ways to approach balance when we say that. Um, it can be within yourself or a certain situation, but we want to tune into, you know, balance within family, relationships, um, you know, your relationship with work um, and, and where that balance lies. Um, so Anton, is there um, anything within you know your side or your perspective when it comes to balance and you know whether it's family trips or um, just having that outlet that you want to elaborate on or build on? Yeah, there's a lot, man. I went to my chiropractor, and he kind of gave gave a very simple explanation. Uh, you can't physically see me, but he has he had his hands out. You can imagine your hands out just flat in front of you facing straight forward. And if you lift one hand, he said, if you have too much of this, then you need to stop whatever that is and lift that other hand to meet it. Meaning um, it, was, it was a very simple illustration of, of, of balance. And the way I interpreted that is, for instance, if, if a full work day has gone by, I'm an entrepreneur, so work days to me are like, you know, I mean, before I really set a, a, a hard schedule, it could be from like 5 a.m. to like 5 a.m., <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, right. some days, you know, when you're in that true grind mode, there really is no real uh, sense of time. But uh, what, what that illustration did to me, for me that the chiropractor gave me was really allow me to close my laptop, um, you know, look at my son in his, in his beautiful eyes, and, and tell him how amazing he is, look at my wife and just spend time and just relax and, and stop doing whatever it is that I was doing too much of and doing more of what I wasn't doing enough of in order to kind of like level everything out. And, you know, a lot of times people talk about balance and they take, 
they take things to the extreme. Like I need to take a vacation to uh, Czechoslovakia. You know, I need to um, start bodybuilding or, you know, whatever. It, is. it can be as simple as literally closing your laptop, you know, getting off of your phone, um, being very intentional about being present. Um, you know, balance is something that, you know, there's, there's so many things that are fighting for our attention every single day. So many things. If you ever wake up in the morning and just don't do anything, a lot of times we first grab our phones. Uh, and, and check out what's cracking, you know, see what the news is of the day, what we missed, what's happening that morning, who text us, like what we have to get to. If you don't do any of that and you just sit there and, you know, whatever your beliefs are, I, I pray, I, I, I sit in silence, um, I read the word, and it totally changes the entire day for me. It totally changes the entire day. Um, not doing that is like getting in a car without a seatbelt and just stepping on the gas and not even turning the steering wheel, just going. And wherever I land, I land. But but I find balance and solace in, in actually starting my day intentionally and creating a, a foundation of, of balance and, and calm and uh, direction before I even get started. And it, it literally that little, you know, extra hour, you know, you could do it for 20 minutes, whatever. It literally changes your day. And I think it's important, again, to note that balance isn't always these big things, like these, these huge goals. It's very simple. It's literally about um, maintaining that equilibrium. And, for instance, right now, I'm, I'm sick, man. I got a cold, right? I, never, I don't get sick that often. And I have a cold because I was going too hard. I was, I was in Atlanta. Um, I had an interview with President Jimmy Carter. That's a whole other story, which is dope. And it was out of my natural terrain. I'm starting to tour again. And for a long time, I've been a parent and a husband, which is beautiful. And I did that intentionally because I was trying to create balance. Because for two years straight, two years straight, I was on tour for the Gentlewoman book. When I tell you two years straight, I'm telling you two years straight. <laughs> like uh, gone four to five times out of the month, two years straight. So it was important for me to remain home and, and, uh, and you know, cut back on my traveling and all that in order to really – you know, my kid is only one years old once. He's only two once. I want to be there for all of that. Um, I want to be a husband. I didn't get married to travel, you know, and tour. On a, on a, that's beautiful, but I, I also want to be present in that sense. So as much as I toured and all that, as much as I was, as I was away from home, I wanted to make sure that I was actually home to balance and level that out. Um, it's essential to life, man. I, I got sick because uh, there wasn't enough balance. You know, I was doing too much of one thing, and my immune system shut down. I wasn't getting enough rest, and I was susceptible to everybody coughing on my plane and at the airport on the germs and all that. So uh, it's a lesson to me. You know, I look at it like, and I got to go to Atlanta uh, this weekend with Steve. We're doing the rolling out conference. If you're in Atlanta, please come join. It's going to be dope. But um, I put that in jeopardy. You know, I'll be better by then because I'm already on the up and up. But I put everything in jeopardy. By, by not being in balance. So that's something that I focus on every single day, man. It's so important. It's so underrated. Everybody's telling you, team, no sleep, go hard, hustle, um, no sleep, no sleep. Nah, that ain't it, man. <laughs> like, get your sleep. Like, go to bed. You know what I'm saying? That's balance. Sleep is, is a part of balance. Take your ass to bed, man. Like, you know, while you're, while you're resting, let God work. <laughs> you know what I mean? There's, 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 there's there's going to be a to-do list when you die. You're still going to have a to-do list when you die, guaranteed. So in the meantime, be present, breathe, enjoy this beautiful thing called life and the people around you. Yeah, and, you know, I've, I'm definitely, you know, uh, a part of that, that, that side that goes and goes and goes and doesn't know when to stop. You know, and I'm I'm pretty sure it's it's a lot of us. We get consumed with the world and, and, and working. You know, we're in an environment, we're in a capitalist environment where you need to work, 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 work to get income and awareness and just continue building on what you're doing. Um, but like you said, if you get sick or if something happens, like there's nothing you can do about it. You know, you need to put yourself and your mental in a position to perform at top, uh, at, at, your, at your peak, 
you know, so you can deliver that top performance. And the only way you can do that is with balance. And I know they say work-life balance, um, but you really need to focus on that balance. You need to be able to tune in to your, to your soul and yourself and reflect. Um, and I was talking about this a little bit earlier. Um, you know, we, we go through life so fast and it goes so fast that we tend to forget some of the lessons and some of the habits and some of the things that we've encountered and some of the things who, that made us who we are today, good or bad. Um, and there could be something that you experienced 10 years ago, five years ago, seven years ago, 15 years ago, that you just don't remember because you're constantly moving and you don't take time to reflect. And that piece of insight that you're overlooking, that's stored in your mind that you don't tap into, could be that very lesson that takes you over the top or over that hurdle or over that, that, that bump in the road that's stopping you from progressing. So you need to have that balance um, and be able to reflect and be still and have silence. And I know for a lot of us, it's hard, you know, like, five minutes that we have, we're on our phone, we're looking at all of our social media, we're looking at emails, we're looking at text messages, you know, we're looking at who called us, we're looking at YouTube, we're looking at the news, we're looking at all this stuff. But who's looking at you, you know? And more importantly, are you looking at you? Because that's where the value is. You know, the most important thing that I ever could have done was this book that I just did because it forced me to be still and think about my journey. That was the best thing I could have ever done because it forced me to, to think about the things that I've actually experienced through my life that huh. most of my friends, most of my family talk about because that's the highlight you know, of our relationship where they remember that, that moment in time. And for me, I don't because I've done it a thousand more times and I just keep going. Yeah. I keep going and going and going. What's next? What's next? What's next? And me finally stopping and digging deep into this book forced me to stop and connect with me, Con connect with the 16-year-old canal, connect with the 21-year-old canal, connect with the 26-year-old canal um, to where I am today. Um, and it's made me such a better person. Um, so you need to have that balance. You know, you can't give 100% into anything. You need to be able to have that balance. Um, and when I say don't give you 100% into something, not saying your effort, meaning you need to have that balance within yourself in that situation so you can give it your all when that time, when it comes about, when that time is. AJ. Um, <clears throat> Stephen Kotler, uh, in one of my favorite books called Stilling Fire, uh, he, in, he talks about this, this, this premise of a state called flow. I uh, call it the flow state. And he talks about different um, exercises or different activities you can uh, participate in that introduce flow into your life. Uh, some of those are meditation, uh, which for the last probably three or four years has been one of my favorite things to do. Uh, he talks about exercise. He talks about, uh, you know, different things that you can do. Even, you know, playing basketball. When people say, when you hear the, the, the term somebody's in the zone, uh, or even they even did a, a study on hip hop when people are freestyling, right? They're saying when they people say they're they're flowing, it's because you are in the moment. You're not thinking about the past. You're not thinking about what you're going to do later. You're you're thinking about in that moment. Can you deliver the very next thing right in front of you without being too far ahead? It's it's essentially about being present, and I think that. If you can introduce, you know, those times in your life, like you said, Steve, it forces you to stop and look at yourself. It forces you to be present. Um, same thing with you, Anatan. You're like, look, my son will be one one time. He'll be two one time. So those are the moments where you're forced, whether it's by circumstance or whether it's by choice, you're forced to be present. And I think if you can balance, more, since we're talking about balance, if you can take time to introduce those to yourself, like, how many times can you schedule, like, I'm going to be present and I'm going to, you know, let my to-do list wait and I'm going to be one to, one with my son or one with my family or one in my meditation or writing or exercising. So I think that's a, a huge opportunity. 
Hey, AJ, what was the name yeah. of the book? A uh, Stealing Fire by Stephen Kotler. Stealing Fire? Yeah, Stealing Fire. I've read that book probably three times. By who? Stephen Kotler. Um, here's, a, here's another just really quick study. So they did a study on the Navy SEALs, uh, SEAL, more specifically SEAL Team 6, right? And the, they said that SEAL Team 6, when they're on their missions to execute whatever their mission is, they're in such a flow state and they, they did brain scans during their practice that it's almost like their brains are synchronized when on whatever that mission is. They've done it, they've done it so many times that they, they call it the, the big gray matter where their brains are synchronized um, because they're in such a flow state that they move as one unit. Um, so and, and so many instances of, you know, talking about the flow state and how, you know, I think that if you introduce those intentionally uh, in your life, he also, he also has a book called Flow. Um, but yes, yeah, it's, it's talking about different things you can do to introduce flow state into your own life. So it uh, looks like we have a question here. Give me a second. I definitely don't want to overlook uh, anyone's question. Oh, de definitely dated representatives. Okay, that was back on the dating. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, so did you guys have anything else to add? If not, I'll go ahead and go to the next next slide. Yeah, man. I mean, really quickly, you know, I think that, you know, you got to ask yourself, like, what is this life about and not find your answer on what society says. You really got to kind of like determine what life is for you, and it's very difficult when you're inundated with uh, all the all the suggestions and requirements of the world. But um, you know, I tend to have an issue. I live my life like right. You know, often I'm like in 2021 or something or 2025. I'm I'm rarely, you know, in Tuesday, September 19th at 9:52 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I don't, I don't visit the past often, but I'm always in the future. I'm always like, if I'm not here today, I mean, I'm at least in next week. Like when you're talking to me, I'm, I'm listening, but I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about next week. I'm thinking about 10 years. Like I'm, I'm, I'm there. I'm living there and I report back here occasionally. You know what I mean? That's kind of literally how I, how I, how I think and how I live, but it's, it's unhealthy. It's good as far as being a visionary. Um, it's, it's not good as far as, really appreciating this life and you'll never fully live life or fully appreciate it if you're in yesterday and tomorrow. Like now is the most underrated moment and it's important to look people in the eye and like really truly be present and um, I think in doing again these, these little practices man you know, you will find balance. You'll you'll appreciate these moments, and there's no greater gift than that. You know, it's, it's difficult to just as Steve was mentioning. I'm such a forward thinker, and I'm always going and going and going. And when I was on tour, the most amazing things happened. Like the most amazing things happened, and it took me sitting at home and being a, a, a father and being a husband to look back and realize, like, damn, that shit was that was I can't believe that all happened. That's amazing. You really need to go ahead and, you know, throw yourself a party and get a holiday or something because that was, that was like, un, which, which just occurred was amazing. But, you know, I don't want to live in the past thinking that I wish I had those moments as they were happening and appreciated them as they were happening. And some I did, but this go around is going to be different. I kind of view my life as I climbed a mountaintop. I got up there and I was like, yo, this is what's up. You know, I put my loafers on, I grabbed some white wine. I looked down, I saw some of the homies. I said, let me help you up. I'm pulling people up. I was sitting back and I looked up and I saw a whole nother mountain. I said, oh, oh, snap, I'm not done. I'm not done climbing. So I'm, though I've, I've ascended, I feel like I'm starting all over again because I have another mountain to climb. And on this climb, I've committed to myself and my family and to my God that I'm going to be present. And I've been present thus far and it's beautiful. Yeah, presence and living in the moment is very important. Um, I think that's, you know, it's a gift and a curse. You know, it's, it's a gift because you're present, you know, but at the same time, you know, going back to what we mentioned earlier, you still need to reflect on your journey as well. 
um, so you can identify that journey and reflect and remember um, to be able to move forward if you're stuck. But being present in the moment is it's very important to be in that moment. And a lot of us, you know, simple things. I'll take it to the most simplest thing. When you get introduced to a person, you know, you get introduced to them, they tell you their name, but you're already thinking about the future. You're about you're thinking about what you're going to say next. You're not in the moment. So I, majority of us don't even remember what that person said their name was. You know, so we're having this whole conversation. We don't even know what their name is because we're all we're thinking about is the future. We're thinking about what am I going to say next? What is the next thing that I'm going to say? You know, but when you're present, when you're living in that moment, you get to appreciate that person for who they truly are. And you see them in a totally different light. You know, you get to understand who they are as an individual and how they can shower and embrace and light your life. Um, and that, and you in return, picture you having a conversation with somebody and at the end they're like, what was your name again? Because they weren't in the moment. Like, you know, they, they when you're in the moment, you're going to remember. You know, because you're embracing that situation. But one one little thing I wanted to share. Um, one thing that I do, I, I call it pure thought, right? If there's something that I want to accomplish in life or I want to do, um, I know it's going to happen when I have 0% doubt with that situation. When I When I think about something that I want to do and doubt comes into it, I feel like, like most likely the universe won't let it happen because you don't believe it's going to happen yourself. So a little exercise when you're going to, when you want to do something, when you want to accomplish something, or you feel like it's just a situation for you, visualize that situation and think about it and give it the pure thought. Can this really happen? Do you really see it happen? Do you really believe in it happening? Um, and if without a doubt, in your mind, you, you envision it and you play it through, it will happen. It will happen. That is beautiful, man. That is beautiful, and there's so much truth to it. <laughs> I never heard it quite put like that, but that's exactly, I mean, I do that same thing. If there's any doubt, you know, again, I, I live in the future, man, um, and, you know, you, you know if there's doubt there, you know if something is able to be accomplished or not. And a lot of times, you know, I believe in the unbelievable. I believe in the things that are impossible, um, but it could be something that is possible that I, I find doubt in, and it doesn't come to pass. So there is something to be said about that, man. It's, it's uh, the accuracy in that is very real. And uh, so we have a question, guys, uh, from from Johnny. Johnny, if you would go ahead and unmute your microphone, um, you can go ahead and ask your question to Stephen anytime. Yes. Uh... My question is, do you feel as though there's a sacrifice when you're trying to find that balance between work where sometimes you may be getting pulled in a direction for your family, but you have some great business opportunity or a great opportunity to speak or to, to do some sort of work, per se. How do, you, how do you actually deal with that? Is it, does it process in your mind as a sacrifice or is it something that's kind of autonomous now that you are both married? I'll take that first, man. Um, what's up, Johnny? Uh, that's the homie right there, man. Johnny Tangle doing doing amazing things out in Los Angeles, doing his acting and um, engineering and consulting, man. I, I recognize the voice that's the home team. But uh, for me, it's 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 uh, I position my life where I'm not with the shit, man. Like if it's if it in any way interferes with um, what's most important to me, God, family. Uh, I can't rock with it. So the way that I position it is, um, if it's it's a sacrifice, if it's beneficial to my family, right? If it in the long run or the short term benefits us in a way that is we we all agree upon. And a lot of times I'm left with the decision to, you know, my wife will um, adhere to my decision because she trusts the man she married. So. I take that into high consideration and I value that trust in a way that the decision I make is purely going to be based off of, okay, is this kind of like, you know, is this trip me going and, you know, making some connections that could potentially turn into something? Nah. If it's a guarantee, utilizing that pure thought that Steve mentioned, then I'm there. 
Like I'm, I'm, I'm there. I'm on, I'm, I'm in C1A. But you know, we're, we're gone. But if it's something that you know, it, it might be fun. Um, you know, it, it, there's no real immediate benefit. It's kind of vague and cloudy and gray. Then we discuss it, and oftentimes I'm left to make the decision. I'm not going to go. You know, I've, I've, I've on this go around turned down checks that I wouldn't have turned down before. I've turned down things I wouldn't have turned down simply because my family uh, was more important. And me being there was simply more important. I mean, I was just about to miss the uh, interview with uh, President Jimmy Carter because, um, you know, there was flooding in, in our area in one of our spots. You know, and I wanted to make sure the family was good, but it receded and everything was loved. So uh, I, w I got the green light. But I make the choice when it comes to will this benefit my family? Not will it benefit me? That went out the window when I said I do. Will it benefit my family? Yeah, and, and I totally echo everything that you know, Anton just said. When it comes to making decisions in life, there are two things you need to consider and think about heavily. One is what, it, what are your priorities? You know, um, whatever that, that list is of your priorities, whatever's number one, Number two and number three, you need that. That's a sacrifice you're making now if you're gonna go choose number two and number three over number one. It's a sacrifice, and you need to live with the consequence. So you need to make that decision, understanding that this, you know, these are my priorities, but I'm making this decision to do this. And this is if you're single or married, you know, like you you have priorities. You know, are you going to take this? Um, you know, work trip and miss a family reunion, you know, or are you going to go to this family reunion and miss, you know, your all hands on division meeting, you know, like this, what are your priorities and you're going to have to live with the consequences of the decisions you make. Um, and then what is your purpose? If whatever you're doing doesn't lead to your purpose, then why are you doing it? You need to make sure that whatever it is that you're doing, you get to a point in life when you're single, it's whatever. You just go and do things just to do it, just to say you did it. But when you get into serious relationships and you get into marriage and you get into having children and starting a family, you know, you need to be purpose driven. Everything you do needs to make sense. You don't just do it just to do it because that's taking away from something else that's important in your life. It could be your, your husband, your wife, your children, family, whatever it is, you're taking away from it. So you wanna make sure that you focus on your priorities and your purpose and you make decisions solely on that. That's it, man. Like if it doesn't, that's kind of how I, how, I, how I navigate. If it doesn't edify me, and that's anything, you know, music, television, human beings, um, you know, relationships, business opportunities, and I don't edify it, if there's not an exchange in value, I can't be a part of it. I mean, come on, man. I do listen to some music that's, that's destructive. You know what I'm saying? I'm not all the way there, and I'll never be. You know, I like, I like some trap music and some garbage uh, music that's very destructive to my spirit. <laughs> but ultimately, if, if something doesn't edify me at this point in my life, man, I just can't involve myself. Whether that be family, whether that be 10-year relationship with a friend, like I'm taking, I'm taking a uh, taking account, man. You know what I mean. And if 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 it's if it's not edifying, then I can't rock. And uh, a suggestion: take a trip to to Europe and see how they do things, and see where they list their priorities in terms of um, you know business versus family, and see where their importance lies. When you see how they take a long time at restaurants to serve you, and um, you know, how long and lengthy the dinners are when you're finished eating, how long it takes for them to give you the bill because they value fellowship. They value pre living in present moments. They value family. They allow you to take vacations like um, some of these startups are starting to do, like Facebook and Google, and take long maternity leaves and giving the husband um, also, uh, a, a, I don't know what they call it, uh, paternity leave. Yeah, uh, but. There, there is, there is uh, in the in the states, somewhat awareness of of the young, cool crowd, um, the innovative crowd, the disruptors who are who are willing to uh, 
rearrange priorities, but it's not the it's not the norm. But take a trip to Italy, go to go to anywhere in Europe and see how they rock, and I'm sure you'll begin to reflect on your own decisions and um, adopt some of those principles. Family is family's important, man. God and family is everything. All this capitalism and you know all these goals and this career is dope, but you weren't created to work. You weren't created. You're not here to like. Your purpose isn't isn't always rooted in 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 what brings you your check. So I know we're coming up on time. We're already at the hour mark. Um, oh, so we got to do part two. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna have to do a part two. Um, we'll touch on one more topic. We have three more, but we'll touch on one more topic and then we'll continue this conversation um, down the line. But one of the comments that came off of balance from Sasha was. And even if you're not physically present, make sure your decision subsequently benefits your family, um, which I thought was pretty good. Um, so the, the, the last bullet for tonight, um, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to go into to the remaining, but um, over-communication. Um, this is an important bullet. Um, being able to overly communicate you know, the message, because sometimes they might not have heard you the first time. You just want to make sure you're very clear on what your intentions are or what it is you're communicating to the individual um, or business. You know, you want to be able to, you know, they always say in business, you want to make sure you send an email because that tracks it. You know, a phone call isn't good enough because somebody can forget that phone call. So you always want to have that trail with an email. Um, whether it's a relationship, you want to be able to have that dialogue and sit down and, ha and, and converse and have those, um, you know, talking points come to life um, and be open, that transparency and honesty, you know, you need to over communicate that so that, you know, you're not misguiding somebody and you're not being, you know, led down a path that you, you don't want to go. So, you know, I, you know, I think it's a very important um, thing to touch on. So. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll cover it, but anytime on your end, um, what are some things you want to touch on when it comes to over communication? You know, you know, when it comes to business and love. I mean, it's it's, it's a pretty basic principle, man. I discussed it in a uh, gentlewoman. Communication kills assumptions, you, and it it is safe to assume that you were misunderstood. I always kind of go into a conversation, into a dialogue, and just. You know, the person has either no idea who I am or no idea what I'm talking about. Um, specifically, not obviously in casual conversation or banter, but specifically, I mean, if I'm communi communicating something in business, uh, if I'm communi communicating something to my to my wife, it's important to, and she gets irritated sometimes because I'll say something and I'll say, okay, now can you repeat back what I said from your point of view <laughs> to make sure that you understand it. And there are no holes, so that in the future we're both protected. You know, uh, from a business standpoint. So, I mean, I'm dealing with this now. I, I, I guess I can't really go too as much as we're digging deep. I can't go too much into detail. But something as simple as uh, an an email being uh, being clear, you know, has caused a situation where uh, you know it's it's. I, I, can't, I guess I can't go too much into detail, but it's caused a situation where um, somebody may have purchased some flights for uh, a business event that is not occurring and that could have easily been prevented, um, you know, with a few more words in the email message. Um, but now we, we may have to backtrack and do some things and um, it, could, it could get, um, it's obviously going to be worked out from my perspective, but now it puts us in a situation where um, we may have to sacrifice some, but that's all because you know things were not overly communicated. And again, as, as irritating as it can be, I think it's vital to make sure that you've been understood. I mean, we hear people all the time, but we don't understand. Um, and there's a difference in listening to just kind of listen and listening to, to understand. And there's also a difference from speaking to to speak and speaking to be understood. So uh, one of the most effective things somebody can do is clearly communicate. And I remember when I was working in IT and uh, I was an intern at Top T Data Systems in Santa Clara, and the CEO would come in and have conversations with the interns, and he said 
you know, what's the most, I, I think I asked what's the greatest skill set that a CEO should have. And he said the ability to communicate effectively. I was like, what? <laughs> you know, as a kid, I'm thinking, you know, that's it. You know, I thought he was going to have this profound statement, but that is profound. There's simplicity in it, but it's, it's profound, and it's one of the greatest arts um, that we all love. Jay-Z does it well. Langston Hughes, Maya Angelou did it well. Uh, you know, the Jamil Hill, our, 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 our um, sportscasters, and, um, you know, the people we know and love, they communicate well, um, and people are drawn to that, great storytellers, um, whether it's, it's in mu music, movies, whatever, we all love and appreciate a great communicator. Yeah, and uh, that was, you know, perfectly said. And, you know, the touch on what you said about CEOs and effective communications, just to put it in perspective, think about how the, the moving parts and how many different people a CEO needs to communicate with and how that needs to be clear across the board in order to let the, the, the actual um, business function properly. You know, you're, you're communicating to, you know, your PR team, you're communicating to maybe your government affairs team, you're communicating to your sales team, you're, you know, communication with your marketing team. There's so many layers. And when things happen, people look to you for the answers. You know, they, they look to you to answer those questions. So to be able to communicate effectively is so important. And it's crazy that he said it because on our next call next month, we're going to have Denise Thomas, who's the effective communications coach. She's going to be our guest next month. So Anton and I didn't even plan that. And he said it, you know, which is crazy because that's going to be the topic of next month's conversation is effective oh. communication. Um, just to sh show you and tell you, you know, the importance of it. You know, I always say when people ask me, what was the most important class that you took in college? And I say effective speaking was the most impactful, important class that I took when I was in college. Um, and I'm able to get in front of a crowd of 10,000 and talk, or a crowd of 100 and talk, or a crowd of one and talk, because of the, the things that they taught me in that class, you know, and being able to effectively communicate, to understanding along my journey, being dyslexic, writing and spelling, I, hate, I hated it, you know, but it got to the point where I understood in order for me to grow, as an individual, I needed to be able to write better and more effectively. So I focused on that. I took classes on it to be able to write. Um, so all that is very important, you know, and it, it's being true with yourself. You know, I could have been like, yeah, whatever, it is what it is. But in order for me to grow, I was real with myself and knew what my shortcomings were to be able to work on it and grow as an individual to become and be, um, you know, where. I, ultimately where I wanted to be um, and focus on my purpose. So AJ, if, if you can, can you scroll down to the book records? So when we pick this back up, we're going to have some more Q&A. Um, some of the topics, some of the things we missed out was um, talking about outlet um, and um, needing to refuel and then financing, um, which is always a tough conversation you know to have with your significant other or your clients or customers so we're going to cover those and we'll probably add a couple more um, when we pick this back up for part two um but book records um anytime we didn't uh, get a chance to update it all but um you know do you want to touch on some of your, your, your book recommendations obviously i put one of yours up up there but um talk about some of the books that, that you might want to recommend yeah, when I did this, I wasn't even trying to, you know, <laughs> I was I was just being honest. I wasn't trying to, like, you know, uh, oh, everybody go check out Steve's book. But, uh, but seriously, um, it, it was one of the recommendations. It was one of the last books that I read. And um, it's, it's more than a business book. You know, there's uh, so many principles that are applicable to business, but also um, applicable to your, to your brand and uh, to your real life, even internally, some things that, questions you may have and a lot of times when you read those business books uh, they're very formulaic in the sense that they just kind of cover like these hardcore business principles and they read like a scholarly uh, piece of literature and um, 
you know, this is not what that is. It, he, he talks about his dyslexia. He has several contributors, some dope, um, some really dope contributors to help supplement what he's, um, the principles that he's getting across. And I, I highly recommend you pick it up. Uh, became a bestseller on like day one. And the second book is Revival um, by Angela Benton, and uh, she has done a lot of work in the tech industry. Uh, she was featured on, I think, CNN's Black in, the Black in Tech and uh, Black in Silicon Valley, I'm sorry. And uh, she does a bunch of crowd, uh, fundraising for, uh, for, for, for small businesses and raises millions of dollars, and uh, she got diagnosed with cancer. And the subtitle is How I Rebuild Life to Longevity After Cancer, Burnout, and Heartbreak. And the book really discusses, when she was on Good Morning America a few weeks ago, it goes and delves into balance and what that really means and what that really looks like and specific steps on how you balance, you know, life, real life and career because uh, just like us, she's a go-getter. And even more so as a black woman because, unfortunately, black women – in this strange society, you're at the lowest of the totem pole. In my opinion, they're at the top, but that's a whole other conversation. But they have to work even harder uh, than even us as a black men have to work. So she goes super hard, ends up getting cancer, and realizes, hey, that's my wake up call. You know, I got a cold, she got cancer. So um, she, she's healed now. I'll be healed in a few days. But it's an excellent book that, that kind of goes deeper into some of the stuff we scratched the surface on this evening. What's the name of the book again? So I can write it. It's called Revival. Revival. Uh, search on Amazon, Angela Benton, um, How I Rebuilt a Long, How I Rebuilt a Life for Longevity After Cancer, Burnout, and Heartbreak. And I'll, I'll type the link in your Facebook Live. Yep. Um, so uh, thank you for the, the book records. And obviously, you know, last month, these were some of the items that we highlighted, but um, my first book, um, actually, you know, the, one of the authors is on the Facebook Live right now, which is um, Sasha, um, a good friend of mine. Um, she did a book called the, um, the Well, where fitness begins from within, and it's been life-changing for me, you know, to be able to, when you talk about balance um, and wanting to you know, take a look at yourself in the mirror and realize some of the things that you need to do in order to continue to grow. Um, you need to take yourself serious and your health serious, um, especially within our communities. So, um, you know, I've been taking these aminos that, you know, she recommended. I'm about to do a 20 day detox um, just to flush out the system and clear my mind to, you know, continue to push forward. You know, I've been going for 30 plus years strong, you know, um, from breast milk to where I am now. So I need to continue to, <laughs> I need to continue to, to, to put that proper nutrients in and to be able to grow. Um, what did JC JD call it? That liquid gold. So I need to, um, you know, tap into that. And it came at the right time. So thank you for that, um, Sasha. Um, put the link and everything in the Facebook Live so everybody can tap into. Um, and then, you know, really not because he's on here, but you know, I always talk about him, but and at times, you know, most recent book, The Gray, when we talk about somebody digging deep, I, know, I remember <laughs> we were in the middle of a, a game at Madison Square Garden, and he's, he, we're talking about this before he even came out. And we're talking about relationships, we're talking about certain mindsets in the middle of a game. You know, that's how important it was <laughs> to share that insight and get that information and talk about it, you know. Um, so, you know, when somebody puts Where that on. Huh? Where are we sitting? <laughs> We're sitting courtside and, and still, <laughs> still focused on, you know. Um, so when somebody takes that time and puts that much work um, and effort into a body of work, not easy to write a book. It's very hard. Um, you have to shed light and give it love. Um, so the, do you want to um, talk about it a little bit? Just touch on it briefly. Yeah, man. The, the gray is a, a study of real relationships and where we went wrong 
And the first two books I wrote were very, uh, in my opinion, as much as they've touched lives and have been uh, penetrated through society and, and culture and have done exceptionally well, they were surface level in the sense that I didn't dig deep enough because I left people with a feeling of, uh, of, of excitement and this reinvigorate, reinvigorated feeling of their worth and, oh, yeah, I got my head held high. Let me step out of society but there was still more internal digging to do. And I wasn't going to feel comfortable until I had the most difficult, honest, truthful conversations and, and really gave people a, a, an opportunity to see themselves in the mirror um, with no distraction at all. And the gray will make you see yourself in the mirror, period. Um, I poured 35 years of my life into that book and beyond because of all the experiences and that I pulled from. Uh, the book is interesting because it's told in the, it's, an, it's a nonfiction book, it's a self-help book, uh, but it's told in a fictional way where there's a storyline with characters, um, you know, the character is based on real events. The Grey is based on real people's stories that I've either gotten firsthand or that I was able to tap into, and um, that's just a God-given gift that I have, that, that sort of discernment where I can feel people. Um, I can put myself in their shoes and experience what they've experienced and, and legitimately feel how they feel. So whether that's a rape victim, whether that's, um, uh, you know, a racist, whatever it is, I can put myself in pretty much anybody's shoes, and it's not always comfortable. Um, so that book kind of highlights and details everything that is omitted from any and every book you've, <laughs> you've ever read. It's like the most truthful piece of work aside from the Bible that I've ever, and that sounds crazy because I wrote it, take myself out of the equation. It, it, it's the most truthful and very necessary in these times um, book that will allow you to See, it'll reveal who you are and allow you to see that, accept it, forgive, move on. Um, so it, it deals with, again, relationships, not just romantic, but platonic, family, business, and otherwise. The Gray, available on, on Amazon, on Barnes & Noble. I'll be releasing the digital version soon. I intentionally didn't release the digital version or the audio version because I need you to touch those pages and smell them and sit by a tree and... You know what I mean? Smoke a cigar, drink some wine, or draw a bath, light a candle, and really spend time with this book and get physical with it because it's necessary that you spend time and take your time as you read it. Yeah, and I I, I asked you to, to, to go into it because I wanted to show everybody on the Facebook Live the cover and, you know, people are saying beautiful cover and stuff like that. I just wanted them to see the artwork. It's not just about what's in the book as well. It's just you see from the cover, you know, the thought, and the, the emotion and the passion that goes into this book just simply by the artwork because it's not your typical cover, you know. Um, and I, w I wanted to show people, you know, where I bookmark. Um, one of my favorite, you know, chapters is 19th of December, Buyer's Remorse, which is simply phenomenal. Um, yeah. Good, good work. Um, AJ. Thank you. Yes, sir. Um, so the book I wanted to talk about, um, I actually want to throw back to the book that came up earlier, uh, Stealing Fire by Stephen Kotler. Um, that book, you know, and the work that they did on understanding flow state uh, and understanding optimal performance uh, at different levels. Uh, and they even have a chapter in there that talks about the benefits of, of rest, which is, uh, to Stephen Inutan's point earlier, you know, we live in a very... You know, if you look at Instagram, hashtag team no sleep, if you type that in and click it, you see all types of people at four o'clock in the morning <laughs> talking about team no sleep, check in. Um, you know, it sounds good and, and it sounds like fire, those people are fired up, but, um, you know, this book points out the extreme benefits of rest and putting yourself in a flow state. And so, again, that book is by Stephen Kotler, and he's done a lot of work. Uh, and the effects of rest on your brain, the effects of uh, spending extended periods of time in the flow state. He talks about monks that 
you know, some of the silent retreats that they do and the, the health benefits of doing that. That's no, no speaking, no eye contact, no communication with other people for extended periods of time uh, to the point to where you can feel sensation, sensations that change in your body. Uh, you can get so zeroed in. Uh, so that's one. And the second one is Mastery by Robert Greene. Uh, and this is, uh, it, it, the conversation in this one is more about becoming a master of your craft and being really good at what you do uh, as opposed to what the world expects of you and even what your, what your family expects of you. And even sometimes when you see things that are glamorous for other people and you say, man, if I could just be like this person. Uh, one of the examples that he uses um, is, uh, Jesus, is it's Darwin. Uh, and he talks about his Darwin's cousin was actually the smart kid in their family. Uh, and he was kind of the kid that was only interested in, you know, in animals and in all these other things. Um, and his kid went on to be like a childhood prodigy and on and on and on. But as it would turn out, he was doing all those things because at a very early age, he was deemed, deemed a prodigy. So he lived his entire life living up to what he was deemed to, you know, by other people. Uh, where, you know, Darwin, on the other hand, kind of went for the things that he loved. And as we all know, we don't even know his cousin's name. I can't even remember his name. <laughs> so uh, it talks about, you know, figuring out what it is that you're a master at and zeroing in on that so that you can be the best you. Uh, and I think, you know, again, with, with Inatown on the call and Steve, I think it's a very appropriate conversation because they have tapped into the art of being themselves and making a life out of it. So um, those are my two books. Well, everybody, thank you for being on tonight. Um, next month, we'll, uh, you can tap on to uh, log on to thebrandexecutive.com and see um, the date of our next call. We'll have Denise Thomas, the effective speaking coach. Well, sorry, not speaking, the effective communications coach uh, will be the guest on our next call. And then um, Anton and I and AJ are going to plan a part two to this. Um, so uh, thank you for being on tonight. AJ, anytime you guys have anything you want to say? Yeah, anytime. I just want to thank people for their time, man. You know, it's late. <clears throat> um, you know, it's hard to tune in and, and be present, and I appreciate you all just taking a listen. And um, we'll be making some announcements on uh, soon. So keep up on my social media about uh, some really cool announcements happening. Yeah, I'm Every sorry. We should go say that again. I'm sorry. No, I said we're going to be making some, some really dope announcements on social media very soon, so uh, stay tuned. Nah, I I wanted to make sure you said the your your social handle, so they got uh, very Olesque, B E R E O L A E S Q U E. Um, and then those who are in Atlanta on Saturday. Uh, Bariola and I, well, he'll be speaking on Friday out, and we'll be tag teaming on Saturday. Um, we'll be at the Ride Rolling Out Conference, um, touching on some topics, and we'll have our books available there as well. Meet us live. Come check us out. It's going to be at the Lattimore all day. Um, you can go on ride.rollingout.com for the agenda. AJ. All right. Um... I look forward to next month, man. This is this has been an amazing call. Thank you guys who still hung out with us to the end. We still got a lot of people hanging on with us. Appreciate you guys and, and like Stephen and Barry always said. Um, I'm sorry, Stephen Inaton said, pay you know, pay attention to social media uh, and we'll update you guys. You pay attention but not too much attention. Live your life. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Well said. All right. That's it for me, brother. Well, Later. All right. Good night, guys. Good night.